For the last few years, I've been working on a series of stack dishes. So you have a very sculptural object. And its surface is also very complex. But the pieces are functional forms that retain their function. That's one of the nice things about ceramics and pottery, is that it can be many, many different things. It can be functional and practical and sculptural and representational and decorative and all those things. And instead of stressing one of those aspects to the detriment of others, I tried to include all of them in my work and use all of them. I want my work to, to be positive. I presently work in Los Angeles in a small studio. And to go to the studio, I ride a bicycle. I live in Los Angeles, but I do not drive a car. Things that people take for granted in this city, like cars and telephones, I try to ignore completely. In my studio, there is no music, and I don't have a phone, so I can't be disturbed, and it's very quiet, very silent. When you work with clay and ceramics material, every step of the way, the material changes drastically. And you never know what will happen next, how it will be transformed by the process. Because of that, you need to have absolute faith in what you're doing. And you have to be able to relinquish control. Pottery's relation to time is also very interesting because you start with a very soft material, very malleable, very plastic clay. And through the action of water and force, you give it form, and then it dries and becomes hard but brittle. Then through the action of fire and heat, it becomes harder still and much more resilient and tough. And actually it becomes permanent and it can't be return back to the clay state. It can't be reversed. In my work, I use conventional forms, pots, cups, plates, bowls, because I want my work to be accessible and easily recognizable by everybody. I want the first impression to be one of accessibility, so that you know what you're looking at. You know it's a bowl, it's a cup, it's a plate. A 
A few months ago, I read this book by Stephen W. Hawking called A Brief History of Time. And in that book, at some point, he explains the nature of time. And he uses as an example a coffee cup on a table. And the coffee cup fell to the floor and broke. And he uses that as an example of the irreversibility of time. The fact that once the cup is broken, it will not go back to the table by itself and be a whole cup again. And this example of a cup struck a chord in me because it's, a cup is an object that I'm very familiar with, that has meaning for me. And it struck me that I could use that image of a cup to illustrate time, as explained in Stephen Hawking's book. The argument of the book is that there are three different aspects of time, which Stephen Hawking calls arrows of time. The first arrow of time is the psychological arrow of time, when we understand time as past, present, and future. And on the piece, I decided to illustrate that aspect by seeing the image of a teapot pouring water in a cup and the image of somebody drinking tea or water out of a cup. So real-time experience in, in an everyday aspect. The second aspect of time is the entropic arrow of time where time is ever more complex and irreversible. I illustrated this with the image of a teapot or a cup being broken and falling into pieces. And the third and last aspect of time is the cosmological arrow of time, where time is in expansion like the universe. And this is illustrated by the image of a little teapot or a little cup growing progressively bigger until it occupies the whole space of the piece. So the three different aspects of times, the three different arrows of times are illustrated on the piece. Pottery is something that's made by all culture through all time. It's a universal practice. That makes it very easy to understand. Everybody knows what a pot is, what it looks like. But it's difficult to understand its meaning because pottery, like music, is a true abstract art form. It doesn't refer to anything else but itself. A bowl made thousands of years ago and a bowl made today is basically the same object. The form is the same, the function is the same. Everything about it is, is rather similar. It hasn't changed through all that time. Any pot represents the whole universe. It embodies a universe. It's made with the four basic elements, air, earth, water, and fire. Because of that, it's very primordial. The base of the pot touches the earth, and the form was raised from the earth through the action of water. And the opening on top reaches to the air. And then those three elements are basically fused together 
by the action of fire to become a piece of ceramics, a pottery. I would say that pottery relates to architecture because like architecture, it's about space and the containment of space. But it does it in a way that's much more intimate than architecture. Not only because of its size, but because of the way it's experienced by the hand, the mouth, the body on a very intimate scale. Some people's reaction when they see a show of my work is that it is a group show. They mean that as a criticism, but I take it as a compliment. I want my work to be more than one thing. And one of the most exciting aspects of ceramics is that it can be many things. The forms themselves are very varied. You have vases, bowls, plates, teapots, many things. But my work is, you know, very simple. I use very simple forms that anybody can understand because they're very familiar. And if you, you know, give yourself the trouble to experience the work, you will understand what it's about. There are things I put in it you might not get, but there are things you will put in it that I didn't put, so it's, it's a fair exchange, I think, and I think it's part of the game. The most exciting and important aspect of pottery is the fact that it combines in one space different spaces. For example, the exterior and the interior and the surface and the form and by ext extension the practical and the cultural. You can say that painting is about two-dimensional surface and sculpture about three-dimensional form, but in a pottery, you have both put together. Not only that, but the important aspect of pottery is volume. With sculpture, um, sculpture is generated by mass, while a pot is generated by volume, and it's that space inside that's the most important, not only because it makes the piece to be practical, but because that volume actually generated the form.
Art deals with space. It does it in different ways. Paintings deal with two-dimensional space. Sculpture with three-dimensional space. Music with the space between sound and silences. Architecture, the space we live in. So on and so forth. All art forms deal with space. And the space of pottery is the space of reality. It's not an image of a space, it's not a representation of a space. It's, it's a real space that you can use, you can invade, you can go in and come out of. And the fact that it is a real space, instead of a utopian space, like we find in sculpture and painting and, and all other representational art forms, make, it makes it different from other art forms. Every ceramic object is treated in a way that implies a ritual. This ritual aspect makes them very common and accessible. It deals with reality, contrary to art, which deals with utopia, images, unreal things. I'm reminded of Robert Rauschenberg when he said that his work functions in the gap between art and life. Well, with pottery, there is no gap. It's something that's made by the human body. That's always experienced directly by the body. You have to touch pots. You always have a very intimate relationship with them. Another way still to look at pottery is that each pot is a human representation symbolically in an abstract manner. Even the vocabulary we use to talk about pottery refers to this. Foot, the body, the shoulder, the neck, the lip of a vase. There's no distance between a pot and a person. We live in a very literate world visually. Everybody can read and understand images very well. But we have become alienated from things that needs to be experienced with other sense than the visual. Usually works of art, they're meant to be looked at. And in my work, you have to touch the object in order to experience it. You have to take it apart, put it back together. You have to hear the sound the pieces make when the bang against one each other. You have to 
experience the smell and taste of food if you're using the pieces. Or if you're only looking at the pieces, you can experience smell and taste vicariously. So all the senses are brought into play in experiencing the work. People confuse personality with expression. I think anonymous art is very, very expressive, but it's, it, it doesn't tell you anything about the personality of the person who made it. When you work in ceramics, you work for eternity because the work you do will be around for thousands and thousands of years. This might sound like a very pretentious statement, but because it's true, it's part of what the work is, and it should be acknowledged. Wood and fabric rots or burn, and plastic will be disintegrated, and paint will just fall apart, and metal can be melted down, and so on. Well, ceramics will be ceramics forever. It's based, you know, in, in timelessness, in eternity, and all those very lofty words that sound very pretentious, but I happen to be very ordinary when you think of it. Artists are completely irrelevant to the 